All right, so let's finish up. We talked very briefly about how um, knowing these symmetries makes your integration very simple because like I said, if I had uh, symmetrical boundaries like negative two and two, I would know because this is an odd function that the area that's bounded by those, the negative is gonna exactly cancel out with the positive like we saw earlier. So that's with integration, but you can also see some really cool stuff with these odd and even functions if you think about derivatives, okay? So let's suppose, uh, let f of x, let's suppose it's an odd function, okay? So therefore I know that f of negative x equals negative f of x. What can I say about the derivative f dash of x if I know this fact? Well, this is one of those places where even though it was very inefficient to use earlier on, um, we still taught you how to differentiate things by first principles. When you're in a hurry, you don't differentiate things by first principles because it takes a long time. But if you try to develop new understanding, there's few better places to go to return to the foundations. And it's gonna be exactly the same case here. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use first principles on this f of x, but I'm going to keep in the back of my mind this fact that I know because f of x is odd. All right, let's have a go at this. So if I want f dash x, which is the derivative, right? Going back to first principles is this awkward fraction thing, right? It's the limit as h approaches zero of, take a breath, f of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h. And if you want to think back, what this is really looking at is um, a vertical change, a rise, divided by a horizontal change, a run. So this is just a fancy way to say gradient at a point, right? Uh, which is special because usually a gradient requires a start and an end point. So this is the gradient over a single point, which is weird. That's why calculus lets us do special things. So if that's what f dash x is by definition, well, all this stuff with oddness and evenness is about substituting in negative values of that same value of x, right? So what would happen if I substituted in negative x? Let's have a go. I'm gonna get the limit as h approaches zero of f, here we go. The first x that I'm gonna substitute is negative x plus h, and then I'm gonna subtract f of negative x. There's my substitutions and then I'm going to divide through by h. Okay, now, what can I do with this? Well, on the first blush, like the easiest thing to have a look at is this guy along the end here, right? f of negative x, because I know that f of x is odd, I can make a substitution there, right? I can say, hmm, hold on a second. Instead of writing this as negative, or minus I should say, f of negative x, I can substitute that for negative, negative f of x. Are you convinced by that? Do you see that this, this substitution from here to here is the definition of an odd function, okay? And I still have this minus sign here that was from the original first principles, okay? So that's what I can do with that right-hand part of the numerator. What can I do with the left-hand part? Well, it's not as immediately obvious, but we can actually do some simplification here, right? If what I do is I'm going to write this as a negative as a factorization. Now you might think, why would I factor that? Because I don't have a negative for both of the terms in there. Well, just stay with me, okay? If I factor out here a negative from inside here, what do I get? Well, I take the negative out of the x, which leaves me just with x. When I factor a negative out of a positive, you get left with a negative because two negatives combine to make a positive. So I'm gonna get minus h here, okay? Now, think about this carefully. A lot just happened in there. In fact, I'm just gonna make this a little clearer by just making the, the colors the same. Um, so I deleted more than I wanted to. Mm, that's better. All right, so this negative x plus h, I have factored out a negative like so. Here we go. And hopefully you can convince yourself if you went in the reverse direction, if you went and expanded that set of brackets that I have down in here, right? Um, the negative with the x would give you this negative x and then the negative with the negative h would give you the plus h, okay? I know that seems weird, why would you do that? Well, hold on to your hats for the next step. Now, I have the denominator there over h, that hasn't changed at all, okay? Now, what's going on here? Well, let's tidy this up a little bit. 
Um, I can see here with my limit as h approaches zero. For starters, on the end there, we started with that first. You've got two negatives, right? So that negative plus negative gives you plus f of x. Okay, can you see how I did that? Um, I'm again following from this negative and this negative, combining into a positive, all right? Now, what do I get from this left-hand part, the green part? Well, because f is an odd function, that's where we started with all the way up here, right? f is odd. Therefore, f of negative something is the same of negative f of that same something, right? Now, I have f of negative something right here, f of negative x minus h. So therefore, this x minus h is going to stay on the inside, and this negative is going to creep out to the outside. I can bring it out because f is odd. So therefore, I'm going to write this, f, or minus rather, f of x minus h. H. Hmm, this is a bit mysterious. Again, that denominator is just hanging out there, not doing anything else. Now, my limit hasn't been evaluated yet, so I'm just going to leave that as the case. Now, what have I got here? How can I work with this uh, and make it any better? Well, I've got a negative first and a positive second. We don't tend to write things like that. You know, rather than saying negative two plus five, it would be much easier to think of this as just five take away two. So in the same way, I'm going to rearrange these. I'm gonna write, uh, I'll stay with the same colors that I'm using. That would be a clever thing to do. This f of x, which is positive, I'm gonna write it in first. So that gives me this guy here. And then I've got, this minus f of x minus h, I'm going to write that over here because it's negative, so minus f of x minus h, all divided by h. Okay, now believe it or not, I actually have finished doing all my algebraic simplification. This is my final line, and you might think, oh, but what does this mean? What was the point of this? Well, we need to go back to what first principles is in the, in like, what is the whole point of it, right? Um, this guy here, by definition, right, what does it mean? Well, if I draw you a little rough sketch here, right, it's if you've got some kind of function, uh, like, like so, okay, um, I'm going to copy this because it'll be useful later. There we go. What we're doing is we're comparing two spots here, uh, like a spot like this, call this x, and then we go forward a little bit, and we call that little bit h. So if we go forward by h, we get x plus h, right? So I'm going forward h, and then I compare not just their x values, but their y values, right? That gives me f of x over there on the y axis, and this guy here correspondingly gives me f of x plus h, because it came from an x value of x plus h over here. Okay, now what I'm doing is, like I said before, I'm comparing rise over run. So what I'm getting is the gradient, whoopsie daisy, the gradient of this section of the line here as that section, as that interval gets tinier and tinier and tinier, as h approaches zero, right? So all I'm doing is I'm comparing an x value and going a little bit further over. x value plus a little bit, so that's x and x plus h. What does that mean for this? Well, like I said, I knew that function would be, uh, that drawing would be handy from before. What would this fraction that I've got here mean? Well, I'm going to be comparing a, the same thing, an x value. Let's do it dotted like I had before. But then, I'm not going x plus h, I'm going x minus h. So instead of going in this positive direction by h, I'm going in the negative direction by h. So that lands me at x minus h, that's this coordinate here. So that lands me over here, and then I'm comparing this f of x here with the previous y value, f of x minus h. Now you can see this is still going to give me a gradient calculation. It's still rise over run. It's still y2 take away y1 divided by x2 take away x1. It's just that I'm looking to the left rather than to the right. So in other words, this guy here, even though it is less familiar, this is just another way of saying it's the derivative. It's the gradient function. So what have I got here on the left-hand side? What we started with was f 
of negative x. It's equal to f, or sorry, I should say f dash of negative x is equal to f dash of x, which is the very algebraic definition of evenness. So if you differentiate an odd function, you get an even function, which brings us all the way back to this guy over here. Um, you might recall, it's all the way over there, it's okay, um, that I started with, I'm gonna put both of them on now, I started with sine of x, right? Let's hide that. Now this guy here is an odd function, and if you differentiate sine, you get cos, cosine, which is, this guy here, an even function. So you can see, even though this is not a polynomial, and so the evenness, oddness language is a bit sort of, where's it coming from? It still fits the same behavior that we can recognize here. And you know, even though this is a long and very detailed proof here, um, you can prove yourself really easily if you take uh, you know, derivative of x cubed, this is the derivative of an odd function, gives you three x squared, oh look right there, we're looking at the power, this coefficient over here on this uh, left hand side doesn't really matter, it just changes where you are you know, in terms of scale. This is the part I'm interested in. You differentiate a non-function, you get an even one, and I'll leave it to you as an exercise to the reader to try and do the reverse. If you differentiate an even function, you get an odd function. So, I hope that all makes sense. We covered a lot of ground. The big idea was that functions have symmetry, right? And that symmetry can be very useful, particularly when we're integrating because it can save you a lot of work or make your integral a lot easier. We looked at these two definitions, a geometric one, thinking about reflection and rotation, and an algebraic one using our function notation here. Um, the names, as we saw, even symmetry and odd symmetry come from the polynomials with those respective powers. Uh, we saw the different ways you could combine symmetries either by addition or multiplication and the results you would get. And then lastly, we saw when you differentiate an odd function, you get an even one. And like I said, I'll let you prove that the, the reverse is also true. So in summary, when you're looking out, uh, when you're doing you know, integration or any other kinds of functions, um, look out for functions with symmetry because they can make things a lot easier for you.